Hi there, little chicken nuggets. It's your, it's me, your knight in shining sweaters, Carl. Welcome to Grow TV. Welcome to Grow TV. Hosted by Carl. Where we have fun with our friends, talk about Jesus, and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now, once again, welcome. Welcome, kiddos. Now, I know what it looks like. It looks like I'm in some sort of like space galactic universe. And I'm like King of the Beatles and Chicken Nuggets. Ha <laughs> ha! That would be pretty cool. But that's not what this place is. This place is something special. Something spectacular. Something truly super duper. You want to know what it is? You really want to know? We are in the pages of the Ever After Storybook. Yeah. What is the Ever After? How could you not know what the Ever After? Is. You know, in every fairy tale, the main character and some trusty sidekicks go on some amazing adventure, defeat the evil villain, and then find some lost treasure, or the greatest treasure of all, true love. Oh. <laughs> and then there's always the same phrase at the end of each story, and they live happily ever after. But what does that mean? Where do they go? What do they do and for how long? Nobody knows. That's what makes all this so great. The Ever After Storybook lets me write anything and anything I want. Everything, anything, all of it. You don't believe me, do you? Watch this. <clears throat> Wanna see a dragon? All right, here we go. Wow, <laughs> pretty cool, right? How about a unicorn? Oh! You see, in the Ever After Storybook, if you dream it, it can come true. Watch. I want a sandwich with peppers, toothpaste, tres leches, a school bus, a tad bit of mustard, and the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> That's it. That looks like a good sandwich. The Ever After Storybook is the best. Not only can you dream up anything you want, but this is also the place where every famous fairy tale takes place. Peter Pan and his fantastic travels in Neverland. Tiana's adventure through the bayou with a frog. Rapunzel's intense journey back to her family. And who can forget the incredible story of how talking mice saved the day. Okay, some of you might know that as Cinderella, but think about it. Those mice were the real heroes. Countless epic stories of struggle and triumph. Heroes and villains. Enemies and loving friendships. That's why I guess, I don't know, stories like that actually existed outside storybooks. Anyways, I've been writing some pretty cool fairy tales in this here storybook. But it's been kind of lonely. I tried writing up some fun sidekicks to hang out with, but they got distracted by the dragons and unicorns and just disappeared. Oh, I got an idea. Maybe I can write someone into the story. Now, what do you call someone that you can go on crazy adventures with? Someone who can help you out and stick with you. It is a compliment. I like your hair. Hey, thanks, compliment. Okay, well, that wasn't the right word. Is it computer? No. Composer? No. Compass? Wrong again. Is it com, 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 companion? Is that the right word? Carl. Who is that? Is that, is that Grace? Hey, kids, it's, it's my friend Grace. Grace, what are you doing here? I just got done with my milkshake drinking contest with the three little pigs. And? I won. All right, that is so cool. Right? But anyway, what am I doing here? Well, I was just telling the kids how it'd be nice to have a friend in the Ever After Storybook. And here you are! I didn't think it would work because I kind of just like made up the word. What word? Companion. Carl, that's a real word. And you know what else? No, what? The amount of dimples on a golf ball? 236. No, I mean, do you not know that God also gives us companions? Wait, companions is a real thing? I thought that's how you said cooking pans in French. God gives us cooking pans? <laughs> no, silly. Companions. Like friends. People who love us that aren't a part of our family. Wait, how does God give us companions? Well, my friends have just come through meeting people I know. Well, since we are in a storybook after all, how about we go to a true fairy tale from the Bible? I'm talking about the story of Ruth and Naomi. Hmm, is that the one with Jonah and the big fish? Um, no, that would be Jonah and the Big Fish. Right. 
Carry on. Well, Naomi was. Grace, the ever after storybook rules are you must begin every story with. Once upon a time, of course. Let me start over. Once upon a time, there was a woman named Naomi. She and her family were from the land of Judah, but they were living in a place called Moab. They were doing fine, she and her husband and her two sons. Her sons even married women from Moab. But then over time, Naomi had suffered not one, but three very difficult losses in her life. Oh no, what happened? Well, first her husband passed away. <gasps> and then both of her sons. <gasps> she was all alone because the people she had loved the most were now gone. Grace, this is the worst story ever. I need to pick me up. Let's get a happy thought in here. <laughs> Look at the puppies. Carl, that's not the end. You see, Naomi wasn't completely alone. She still had daughters-in-law. You know, the woman who had been married to her sons. And even though she told her daughters-in-law to go back to their own homes, one of them, Ruth, chose to stay with Naomi. Wait, why would she do that? She doesn't have to, does she? Of course not. But for some reason, Ruth decided to stick by Naomi. And Naomi tried her hardest to send Ruth away. But then it was that time Ruth said something extraordinary. What'd she say? She told Naomi, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Wow, I guess you were right earlier. About what? The cooking pans? No, about God giving us companions. Oh yeah, of course. Naomi and Ruth were from two different places. And if it weren't for Ruth becoming Naomi's daughter-in-law, they never would have met. But now these two people who otherwise would have been strangers formed a very special bond because God brought them together. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Yeah, it really is. I'm trying to figure out what that means for me, you know? Totally. You see, both Naomi and Ruth had both lost people they loved very much. So that meant they both needed support now more than ever. Absolutely. And it makes me feel good. Like knowing that God cares about me so much and that God would spend time to give me friends. That's the coolest thing ever. Right. And not only that, but have you ever thought about how God gives us the right type of companions for every situation or season in our life? <laughs> yeah. Just like Naomi and Ruth. Exactly. And to be honest, there might be times where you feel you don't have those good friends nearby. And in those times, we need to pray and ask for God to show us who those friends are. <laughs> I agree. Man, I'm excited to see what friends God gives me. Like you, Grace. You're my companion. You're my friend. I just realized that. You want to go ride on the ice cream roller coaster? <laughs> sure. That sounds great. Hey there, kids. It is so good to see you. Now, I have a really good big idea today, and that big idea is God gives us companions. So let's say it out loud on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. God gives us companions. All right. Great job, kids. Now, make sure do not miss Grow TV next week because we're going to find out what Carl's going to be doing in the Ever After Storybook. We'll see you then. Thank you for watching and tune in next week for a new episode of Grow.